Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Welcome to the Siemens booth. Welcome to Anova from ESSA 2018. And um, we're going to jump right into our next topic, because right here on this stage throughout the entire day, throughout the entire week, uh, uh, um, is what I should say, we'll be presenting different developments, innovations um, from all different areas here in Siemens, talking about financial services, just looking down the aisle here, human resources, compliance, down to energy management systems, uh, mind sphere, of course, food and beverage, automotive, aerospace, you name it. Mind sphere is one of the main topics, and this is also what we're going to be talking about now. And the title of this is how to program an app in 20 minutes. Now, this sounded to me like, huh? These guys really mean this? Is this they're taking this seriously? An app in 20 minutes, program, deploy? How do you do that? Well, let's see what they have to say to it. And uh, let's bring them on stage, our experts, Jens Kautler and Ingo Hecker. Hi, Jens. Welcome. Hey, Chris. Ingo, nice Hi. to have you. We have A nap in 20 minutes? Yeah. Come on now. I mean, we have to be a little bit more precise because what we are going to show you today is how do you get from a use case, from an idea, to get an app deployed out in the cloud using MindSphere and programming is just a part of it. Okay, so. okay, okay. That's, 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 more, that's more tangible. So thanks have fun, lot. all right? So thanks a lot. And we will show you how easy it is to deploy an app, how easy it is to bring it in MindSphere. And this we will do in 20 minutes. So, but before you start, you know, you're not programming an app, you're not developing an app because you want to have an app. You do it because you have something to achieve, a target, or you have a problem, you have a business case, you have a use case to do this. And in this case, we have also a use case with us. We're talking about beer, beer today. As we are in Germany, we should talk about beer. So we're talking about not only a, one glass of beer, we are talking about a whole brewery. And this is my brewery. So what we have at the beginning, we have a big tank of beer. A lot of beer. A lot of good tasting beer. And we have to bring this beer with a pump on the top of our building because there is our bottling machine. So important is here, um, what is the worst case in a system like this? Jens, do you remember, as we talked the other day when we were sitting in the bar, the very worst case is if you run out of beer. That's correct. But for a maintenance guy, somebody who is responsible for this whole plan, not only running out of beer is the worst case, the worst case is running out of beer for a long time. <laughs> and this can happen if something goes wrong in your system. For example, we have a problem in our pipe, uh, or a valve is closed, and no beer is going through the pipe. The worst case is the dry run of a pump, because the pump is cooled by the beer. Uh, while pumping the beer, the beer cools also the pump. If you don't have beer, the pump is running and running and running, gets hot, gets warm, and suddenly it breaks. And then we have the worst case, because then we have to repair the pump, we have to replace the pump, we need uh, time to repair this. And we have a long time, no bottling what we can sell. And this, in any case, we need to avoid. And in order to do so, of course, we need some information about the pump that helps us to monitor it. Of course, pump systems can be very complicated. And for our case, we just use some data of the five. pumps, five, five data points, which is uh, the pressure before and after the pump, the, the fluid flow, which is very important, and of course, the motor current and the temperature. As you said, probably the pump could explode if it's getting too hot. Absolutely. So the temperature is the most critical data point in our system. So we already set up this whole uh, system in Erlangen, in our laboratory. So we have a lot of beer there. We are pumping beer in the next floor. And uh, to show it here, we have it pumped. <laughs> pump this data live in MindSphere. So okay. can now you show we it? can uh, go to MindSphere, yeah. and when you look at MindSphere, when you open MindSphere the first time, or all the time, you have standard components. And one of the standard components, what you see here, is the fleet manager. So you can click on the fleet manager, and you see then the pump, uh, what we prepared already. Here is the pump, and you can open the pump here, and you see data right now arriving in our, let's go to the browser time. Right now, you see here. All the five data points, what we talked about, 
all the five data boils what we talked about. We have the temperature of our pump, most critical one, but we see also how many beer we are pumping at the moment. Like, what is it? 249 uh, cubic meter per hour. This is a lot of beer yes, per hour. But you see some temperature, motor current and stuff like this. All I see is some lines in a graph. That's correct. This is how the pump should run. So this is at the moment everything okay. Uh -huh. But if you look, for example, a little bit in the past, let's go some days back. Yeah? And you see what happened some days ago. Here you see unusual data. So this is not how it should look like. So we can zoom a little bit in here. Let's zoom a little bit in here and, uh, and stay here. So here you see, this is not the usual habit of a pump. So here, let's go a little bit more close to the data. The so, and here this literally shows the lack of beer? This is the lack of beer. You see the black uh, curve here is the, uh, the beer. Here we have 249 and we have here zero. You see also the temperature rises here. You see here the motor count. So different data. Um, what shows me there is something wrong. It is not a, ni a nice line. Yeah? So now we know we have data in Mindsphere because this is the starting point always. If you don't have data, you cannot do anything using the data. So now we have the data. Now we can go back to our ideas and to create an app. And how we do, do we proceed? What do we need next? So the first, what you do when you're creating an app, you, you think about what are the requirements of the app? What, what, want, what do I want to see in the app? So the first, I remember, we have this temperature of the pump. This is our critical point. I want to see the temperature. So in my app, I want to see one data point, maybe as a graph, in my app. Then we have more than one pump in our pump system. Maybe I want to see all the pumps in my plant. And as I'm a big company and have a lot of breweries worldwide, I want to see the overview of all my different breweries. So three requirements, one data point, all the pumps, and at the end, all my breweries. And we both sit together, <laughs> not in the bar in this case, and draw it and said, OK, this could look like our app. This could be uh, the ideal app for us. So we have here the plans and where the plans are on a little map, maybe. We have all the pumps uh, seen. And we see one data point where we see our critical data, in this case, the temperature of the pump. So if we can realize this, it seems that we can scale our business. Absolutely. And now let's start to program exactly this idea. So you know the use case, you know how the app should look like, and now let's do it. OK, so hands on. First of all, of course, we have to do the coding of the app. So that would take some time. So that's the reason why I have prepared something. And according to your, to your draft. So what you're using here, is this a standard, uh, standard uh, IDE, or is it only an uh, environment what you have to do with Mindsphere, or what is it? Good question, Jens. Uh, but this is basically a, a standard editor. This one is a little bit comfortable, but you could also use even an integrated development environment, like Eclipse or Microsoft Visual Studio. Or you can use any kind of editor, like Notepad++ or something like this. Of course, always in combination with the relevant build tools, like Maven, Gradle, and all the other Java stuff, for so example. To sum it up, I can use what I'm already familiar with. I don't have to learn something new. Only to program an app in Mindsphere can use what I used the last 10 years. Exactly. We don't Perfect. want it to change the developers' habits. So okay. they know best which tools they want to use in order to program their apps in the best manner. OK, so this is the first step. Make it easy. Use what you already know. Don't learn something new. OK, so what we see here is, is the code, basically, and of course, Locally on my PC, I did that coding. And the next step, I have to build the app so that uh, I get By the way, you, you're programming here in Java, right? Uh, this is Java, yes. But we can also use something else, like Node.js, or Angular, or Ruby, Python in, uh, in PHP, a week or two. any other. Yeah. So the standard programming languages, we don't want to uh, somebody learning something new. They should use what they can, what they're already familiar with. OK, okay. next step would be we needed to build the app. And just in order to save time, I skipped that also. I have prepared it. And that means we have the app available on uh, my local PC. And the next step is bringing this local app to the cloud. We are talking Mindsphere. We are talking cloud business. So the app has to run in the cloud. You see always the steps here on the little slide. 
building the app locally, push it to the cloud is the next step. And what you see here is uh, just a command line interface, and we have installed Cloud Foundry. So Cloud Foundry comes with uh, the developer offering of Mindsphere. And Cloud Foundry is a bunch of functions that helps you to take your locally developed app and puts it into the cloud. So it it uh, brings uh, the right uh, runtime environments, like the Java runtime environment, puts it into a container, and brings it into a certain cloud resource. And the only thing you have to do is one command, which is CF push. CF stands for Cloud Foundry. <laughs> and now it's running, right? Now it's doing everything. It's preparing everything for you. You don't have to do anything. You're waiting until here is on the screen, app is started, or app is running. Yeah. So takes just some seconds, but the main message is you can focus on the implementation, you can focus on the coding, you can focus on the business logic you have to implement, implement it, and the rest is done by Cloud Foundry, and then you have it in the cloud. And by the way, everything what you see here is live. We are live on the system, we are live doing this, we are coding. The only what is not we typing the code, but you see here, there's not a PowerPoint. OK. So now it has finished, and what we can see here is the route. So what is the route? As we said, Cloud Foundry puts your app in the cloud. Of course, somehow you need to address this application. Is this like a code. link on uh, what I type Correct. in my browser? It's, it's like an address. Yes, you can type in the browser, and then you will get to the app. But here I see uh, running. It's already running. So this, the app is sure. already there? As I said, Cloud Foundry does the job. Can I test it? <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah, to you the, can test it. Let's go here to the launchpad. You remember the launchpad is always the entry point for Mindsphere, where you have the standard tools. And here is the. It's Where's not there. The app? It's, it's not, not there. my fault. I put it into the cloud. It is not your fault. It is not my fault. It is a feature, <laughs> and it is really so. We are taking care about uh, all the roles, and this is important for us, uh, a part of the security concept to only give the rights to things we want to have and, and, and give rights to the app, for example. In this case, we have to uh, create the right to register the right in Mindsphere. In this case, uh, this is the step, set up app uh, with a developer cockpit. Here is a standard tool called developer cockpit. You click on this. So now we see here creating a new application. As we save a little bit of time, we already created here, but this is not a rocket science. You see, you have to only give it a name, you give it a nice picture, here a beer glass. You can describe a little what you have, you tell what is the uh, version of it. So we already tried it sometimes, so four as times you as see, you see. I, it took me some four tries to get it running somehow. And here you see the URL, the route, what we saw in Cloud Foundry. So you copy this here in, and then you click on Save, and then Normally, everybody would say, now you see the app. No. Now you give the app rights. So in this case, you are still in the developer cockpit. You go to rules and scopes. And in this case, we have here the brewery app. And you give this app rights. So for example, you want to read data from the pump. You tell now Mindsphere, this app is allowed to read data from the pump. This app is allowed to delete data in the database. This app is allowed to change data or something like this. It's like yes, that sounded a little bit complex, but the same procedure is when you download an app from the internet. One of the first things you have to do after downloading it, you have to set up the rights, the app, um, or the resources the app is allowed to use. For example, the camera or your contacts or anything else. And the same is what we did here. I remember last time I did something, it asked me, I'm allowed to use the camera. This is the same? Yeah, it's the exactly same. the same. So now you see we did it already. Uh, we have already allocated here the rights for the app, and now now we should see it. Now we should see the brewery. Uh, Where is no. it? Still, it's not a mistake. Still, it's a feature because now imagine the app is already there, but you are not allowed to see it because you are, uh, let's say, one of twenty people in this company, but only one or two are allowed to see the app. So you give them now, in the user management, some specific person the right to see the app. For example, should I give you the rights? I would love to see it. OK, so I give you the rights on the app. So we go to the user management. Here is Inco Hacker. That's me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, we go to Edit. And here you we're looking for the brewery app. 
brewery app. Here's the brewery app. I click on the brewery app. I give you the rights. I put it on the other side. You see here now the brewery app. So the next time when we now open the launch pad, we should see the sure. app. Um, hopefully it works. Sure. <laughs> Let's see. Whew. Ah. Yes, here is the app. This is the app, what we programmed, what we pushed, what we now see here on Mindsphere. So we give it the right. You have the right. And what we're doing now? We're uh, testing we the app. It? I want to see. I want to see the beer. So let's go in <laughs> here. The brewery app. I open the brewery app. And now we have to log in first. Sometimes you have to re-log in. But then it opens the app. And here we have the, we have the map. And oh. Ingo. There's something missing. Huh? I'm okay. still waiting for this temperature <laughs> data. Where are the temperature data? OK, of course, I have prepared the map and all the breweries. However, there seems to be an error when getting the data. And unfortunately, we have to go back to the code and have to find out where the mistake was. We have only 10 minutes left, so hopefully you find the mistake. And, uh, I have to hurry up. And here we have the, the section where it's about the, the time series data. I have to go now to the developer documentation, which is publicly available. So um, everything what you need for programming, uh, if you have a question, if you want to know how it works, if you look for some uh, code snippets, there is a documentation available for everybody of you. You, you don't have to be a customer. You don't have to be uh, a Mindsphere user. You can go to developer.mindsphere.io, and you will see all the documentation what a developer needs to program. If you need information about the fleet manager and the other tools, it's documentation at Mindsphere.io. So it's really easy to uh, remember. So now, so now I'm having a look exactly at the time series API, where it's obviously a mistake. And what I have to enter here is the entity and the property set name. Uh, Ingo, one question. Get means uh, reading get, time series? Get the time series data. So we want to see all the data of the pump you have connected. So I have to get this data. OK, and on the, what you see behind is uh, what you have to type in in your code, yes. right? Of course, this is a function, and you have to enter exactly those parameters and in order to get the correct uh, data. What is the entity? Entity is the pump, right? The, the entity is, is the asset, is probably the pump system. Okay. Yeah? And the property, property set name is then the pump itself. Ah, OK. Good. OK, so having a look at this here, here you find the, the entity ID. And this is uh, the aspect of the pump instance, as we said. But there's some endpoint programmed here, which is latest. Yeah, you program too much. Yeah. Because <laughs> Please delete it. <laughs> I just do. So unfortunately, uh, in order to fix this issue, I have to build the app this time. So I'm going to do so. Building means, in this case, uh, we have to uh, create out of this code an executable file. So we do this now. So. While this is working, and it takes about uh, f 40 seconds or something like this, I can tell you, normally, you imagine we are doing this step here, uh, de developing and building the app locally. At the moment, later, we will, or in the next steps, we will push it to the cloud. But normally, what we do the first time, we did this registration, the, the developer cockpit. Is it working? No, it doesn't work. Oh, now, now we so see. Somehow. OK, I'm sorry. I have to restart it. You see, we are live. <laughs> it doesn't work somehow. Hey, the brewery. Normally, yet now we will see if it's working. So you see, it's real life. Uh, we are not. Ah, no. ah now I'm sorry. Now it's working. Just so a typing mistake. So this happens. But this happens all the time, and not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Last time it did not happen. But what you see here now, uh, we are building the app now. You will see then uh, in a second uh, it runs to 10 percent, 20 percent, 40 percent, something like this. We will push it later. But we don't have to do, and this is the beauty now, we don't have to do all this registration again. As we did it one time, and you have to do it only one time, now we can make a shortcut. Now we are building the app, we are pushing it, and then we don't have to register it again, we don't have to 
put this app again with rights. We don't have to give it uh, to a specific user. We already did this. We have already our little button on our launchpad. We only have to push it, and then we can test it again. So now we see 29%. Okay. So now we can already switch the window. So we'll it will finalize be in a second. Like soon. And everything so the step we already did. Yeah. The next step is the pushing again from the local system to MindSphere. You see, again. And of course, as I have fixed the problem locally, now we again have to bring the app, which I've fixed locally, to the cloud. And then you should see it in your launchpad, and then it should work. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> 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 Let's time. Last time it worked. Now let's see if it's this time working. Oh, so. successfully destroy container. Then two steps more, right? Yeah. Starting the app in Mindsphere. In the Take some, some yeah, seconds. Boy. And again, finished. So Jens? I will try now. It's it's up to you. How many uh, minutes we have left? Check it. Okay, the beer is still here, and now let's click on the beer uh, glass. Yeah, ah. we see it. It's exactly how Do we you want like it. Do you like it? Huh? <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see. But we have different breweries. We have here Innenstädte Brau. We have here a uh, Großmas uh, private brewery. We have here Kölsch. Uh, we can zoom here in in our map. We we have different kind of pumps, and on the right side, and this is important now, on the right side we have here our data points. As you remember, oh, it happened, yeah, it happened here, our, our bad stuff. The pump goes uh, hot. You see this here, the pump goes hot, goes hot, it gets a lot of temperature. This is what we don't want to have, and we have here also no beer pumped at the moment. So. Now I already have a good idea for the next version. Yeah? Maybe we can create an alarm sending me an SMS when this happens. Is of course, that would possible? be a logical next step. And I will foresee it for the next presentation. But yes, of course, we would automate notifications like this because you are not the person that wants to stare all the time on the monitor and, and see if the pump is running. Absolutely. So now we uh, succeed in the test. So we are fi finalized the development part. So only to recap or to, to see again what we did, we developed the app locally, we pushed it to the cloud, we uh, created the app in MindSphere, we did um, also the rights for the app, we registered the app, and then we gave it to a specific user, in this case it was you, we tested the app and now we are ready. The next steps after this, what we did, are after the push, uh, develop, push and test, what are the next steps? OK, so we focus on the first three steps that we can see here, which enables you to come from an idea over the development, push it to the cloud, the testing, and so on. But of course, now you want to commercialize the app somehow. And in order to do so, you would transfer the app to an operator. And as an operator, you could bring the app to the store, where any customer who could make use of it could buy it and use it. But as we focus on the first three steps, of course, we have a lot of colleagues who are really keen on explaining you the next three steps, how to commercialize an app, and you can find the colleagues uh, in the Mindsphere Lounge. So if you're now interested, I only can tell, join us and create your own apps on Mindsphere. There are a lot of colleagues here in the Mindsphere Lounge helping you on every step to create your use cases from the connectivity part of the app development. We have a lot of partners up there that can help you, that can create together with you apps and all this, what you need to take out the data from your plant and make some value out of it. And when you see here on the booth, there are a lot of cubes. One cube is here behind, one cube is here. Everywhere you see a cube, you can go there and say, please show me the Mind app, show me the app on Mindsphere, because every cube means here's something running on Mindsphere on a real machine. In the most case, the machine is next to the cube, where you see the data flowing, and the people standing there, they know about the use case, they know about the app, they can show you the app. This is what we from Siemens side did with Mindsphere and everything else. We encourage everybody, do it and visit us and join us on this journey in the digi digitalization. Thank you very much. All right, a big hand of applause to you guys. Really, really impressive. So thank you very much for showing that it's not that complicated and hard to do something. I mean, programming an app is one way. 
deploying it is another one. And you just, in 25 minutes, you gave us an idea of that you don't need to be the super geek <laughs> to do that. No, so really impressive. How long have you guys been working on kind of making it that easy? Was that a complicated thing? Yeah, of course, it took us some time in order to give all the tools to the developers and like the Cloud Foundry stuff I explained. So this really eases the whole process for you in order to speed up the whole implementation and bring the solutions to your customer. Solution and customer, that's a good point for me because we do have use cases from real customers up there in the MindSphere launch as well. Would you like to talk about that? Which customers are these and what do we show there? So we have a lot of partners there and they have customers in bringing these use cases. So the best way is to talk to them and every of these partners have uh, several uh, partners, several customers and use cases on their part of the booth. Okay, perfect.